Hi everyone, welcome to Filter Lab. In this video, I'll talk about what Filter Lab is and how to use it. Filter Lab is a tool Microchip has created to aid in designing active analog filters. So maybe you've realized that your simple RC filter just won't cut it. What's next? The Filter Lab tool will walk you through the process of designing an active analog filter to fit your application. Let's take a look. It starts with the filter design aid. Here you can choose to design a low-pass, high-pass, or band-pass filter. You can also go through the design process for an anti-aliasing filter. Let's do the low-pass filter and click Next. Here you can choose the passband frequency and attenuation. Signals within the passband region will not be attenuated by more than the passband attenuation. So in this case, signals 1000 Hz and below will not be attenuated by more than minus 3 decibels. You can also choose the stop band frequency and attenuation. Signals within the stop band region will be attenuated by a minimum of the stop band attenuation. So in this case, signals higher than 10 kilohertz will be attenuated by at least minus 80 decibels. This is the ideal response, so when you're finished designing your filter, make sure to check out the simulated response to see how it really does with non-ideal components. On the next page, you can choose different parameters for your filter. Choosing to minimize power consumption will make it so that each stage of your filter uses an op amp with optimized power consumption, meaning it will typically have a lower gain bandwidth product. Minimizing bill of materials means that Filter Lab will choose one op amp that will work for every stage of your filter. I'll show an example of this later in the video. You can also choose the tolerances of your resistors and capacitors, single or dual power supply and its voltage levels, gain, and the topology of your filter, so salon key or multiple feedback. The next page shows a preview of the gain response of your filter. As you can see, it's showing a Butterworth, Chebyshev, and Bessel response. Filter Lab will only support up to an eighth order filter, so if the parameters you put in earlier require, say, a tenth order Butterworth or Bessel filter, but only an eighth order Chebyshev filter, only the Chebyshev filter will appear here, and the Butterworth and Bessel will not be here. Once you've selected the type of filter you want, push finish and it will show you the schematic of your filter. It's as easy as that. But Filter Lab can do so much more than that. From this tab, you can download an image of the schematic to share with your coworkers or to remember for later. You can download the bill of materials in a CSV file format, and you can download the spice code to run simulations outside of Filter Lab. Here you can change the op amp of all the stages or of a particular stage. Before we do that, let's see what the response of the filter looks like by going to the Filter Response tab. Here you can see the magnitude and phase response of the filter you're currently designing. You can zoom in to the plot by just clicking and dragging a box. Double clicking in the plot will reset the view. You can switch plots to see phase in the bigger plot, and here you can download the plot data in CSV format. But maybe you see that something just isn't quite lining up with what you need for your design and you want to tweak the response a little. Let's head over to Modify Current Filter. Here you can change the filter parameters that we had set earlier. You can customize the actual filter coefficients like the frequency scaling factor or the Q factor for each stage of the filter. If you change these, be aware that you will be deviating from a typical Butterworth, Chebyshev, or Bessel response. Let's keep this box unchecked and take a look at the Filter Components tab. Here you can adjust these other features we had already chosen. You can choose from a different set of op amps, like only general purpose or only precision op amps. You can also choose a specific op amp by clicking on Choose My Own Op Amp. This will unlock this drop down list and allow you to choose from Microchip's broad portfolio of op amps. We even include an ideal op amp to compare against the Microchip op amps. Back in the Circuit Schematic tab, if we had clicked on Change Op Amp, it would have taken us to this tab and selected Choose My Own Op Amp for you. Over here in Simulator Settings, you can see even more responses of the filter. Click on these boxes to enable Group Delay, Input Impedance, Step Response, or Noise Analysis. You can also show the plot of the previous filter you've designed. This feature will only work, however, if the cutoff frequency of the previous filter is the same as your current filter or if the Auto Scale X feature is turned off. Auto Scale Y lets you see all the Y data, 
while disabling it will force the plot to stay within minus 140 dB and 20 dB on the y-axis. Having auto scale X on will only show two decades before the cutoff frequency and two decades after. Disabling it will allow you to choose a particular range of frequencies to view. Let's try some of these out. Anytime you make a change to your design, you'll need to push the calculate button at the bottom of the page. We'll head over to filter response and let's take a look at the different plots. Now you can switch through all the analyses we enabled earlier, like noise density or input impedance, magnitude and phase. If we go back to simulator settings and disable y-axis scaling, let's see what happens. Okay, we can see that the plot is locked to minus 140 dB to 20 dB. If we disable x-axis scaling, we can see frequencies between these two values. Let's change it to be from 1 to 1 megahertz. Then let's choose our own op amp, and we'll pick the ideal op amp to see how it compares to the one filter lab chose for us. Push calculate, then go to the filter response tab. You'll see the current plot in blue and the previous plot in orange. You'll notice that for the Salon key topology, we see upturn here. This is due to the gain bandwidth product of the op amp. You can compensate for this with another low pass filter attached to the end of the filter or push the upturn further back by choosing an op amp with a higher gain bandwidth product. You can also switch over to the multiple feedback topology, but be aware that it uses more components than the Salon key and it has inverting gain in each stage. Okay, what if we would like to adjust the resistor and capacitor values? Maybe you want to choose a particular capacitor value to reduce your bill of materials. Go to Modify Current Filter, then go down into the individual stages of your filter. If we click on Stage 1 and then Filter Components, we can choose Set Capacitor. Stage 1 is only a first order filter, so there's only one capacitor. So if we go to Stage 2, we can see that there are two capacitors we can choose from. We can't change both at the same time or else it will affect the passband frequency of the filter. So let's change C2 to be 10 nanofarads. As you can see, this has also affected the upturn here. You'll always want to make sure to simulate beforehand to make sure that the response is acceptable for your design. If we go back to the filter design aid, we can walk through the anti-aliasing filter. The first step will be to choose the passband frequency. You'll need to know the highest frequency of the signal of interest to determine this value. The next step is to choose the sampling frequency of your analog to digital converter. Your sampling frequency will play a major role in where you will have potential aliasing. Due to the Nyquist theorem, you have to sample your signal at a bare minimum of two times the frequency of the signal. Typically, you want to sample much faster than that, like five to 10 times more. As you go even higher, usually you won't need to worry about aliasing as much because you're pushing the aliased signals farther and farther away from your signal of interest. The next thing we need to choose is the bit resolution of your ADC and then the desired signal to noise ratio. Again, you can choose to minimize the build materials or power consumption and adjust to other parameters. You'll see the previews of the different filter types you can choose from. Pick the one you want and push finish. If you want to save your work for later, you can export your settings and import them here. Just push export. Then when you're ready to import, click on import settings, upload, then choose the exported file. If you need any more help, you can go to the help file here. That's basically all there is to know about Microchip's Filter Lab tool. Happy designing. To learn more about analog filters, check out our Analog Filters video series on YouTube.